Well, good evening. I'm Martin Tyner with the Southwest Wildlife Foundation, and we have some new babies in tonight. They just came in this, this afternoon, and these are baby Kestrel falcons. They're very, very cute. Oh, sweeties. Hi. Right. It's dinner time. Oh, yeah. Get says, but I want to see what they're eating. Maybe it's good. They seem to think it's good. These were uh, in a hole up in the eaves of a house. And uh, the weight of the nest and the baby started to buckle the eave a little bit, and people found the, the baby falcons. Now, falcons are primarily a cavity nester, and so they do like to nest in holes. And so small falcons like these kestrels will nest in holes in buildings, holes in trees, old woodpecker holes. And the larger falcons will nest in holes and cliffs, like your peregrine falcon and your prairie falcons and those kinds of things. And so they're primarily a cavity nester. And uh, this is about the time that, that, that we get them right around the 4th of July is when the, the baby kestrels start coming in. So they're kind of right on time, basically. showing up to us. You guys had enough? Clean the plate. Okay. And what we do is we feed them like this until they get just a little bit older when they're able to pull their own food and then we'll just put food in and, and let them uh, feed themselves and then once they're feeding themselves and they're mostly feathered out little fledglings then we'll put them out in a flight chamber where they will basically get no more human contact so that they become wild and when they're about two months old uh, we, re we release them back to the wild and we've got had gotten as many as uh, a dozen of these in at one time because they they have anywhere from one to five babies in a nest and like I said they do nest in buildings and trees and around farms and actually in, in town so they're really quite common and so we do get a lot of these little kestrel falcons in and so a, a dozen or more in a year is, is quite normal for us but they are just about as cute as you could possibly imagine. In the wild they eat lots and lots of insects like grasshoppers. They eat small mice and other small birds when they are, are full grown and hunting. And of course when they're ready to be released back to the wild the farmers really appreciate it because they like I said they eat uh, a lot of grasshoppers, a lot of insects and they eat a lot of uh, small mice so the farmers Love to have these little kestrels around their farms to help keep the, the pests down. So that's our newest babies. They just came in this afternoon. Uh, they're looking perfectly fine and, and uh, just uh, a whole bunch more work for us to do and a whole lot less sleep. And Cody is being pushy and trying to keep say, come on, Mom. Yeah, you're he's nudging pushing my arms all over the place. Yes, he's, he wants his attention. He says, stop. Stop looking at the baby birds and look at me. Because hey, I'm the important Are you the important one, huh? Yes. So, you guys have a good night. We'll talk to you soon. Let them see our babies. Here, these are our, 
really, really cute. They're adorable. These are kestrel falcons. Hi, little one. Hi. Yes. Bring it up where you get a good close look at it here. This is the smallest falcon found in North America. Now, falcons are primarily a, what we call a cavity nester. And so they nest in holes. And so the large falcons, like the peregrine falcon, likes to nest uh, in holes and cliffs. And prairie falcons, holes and cliffs. But the kestrel falcon, because it's a small falcon, they nest in old woodpecker holes and trees. And, the, and if they can find a hole in a building or a sign uh, that they can go into and raise their babies, they'll take that. And so these guys came out of a, the eaves of, eaves of a house. The mama falcon found a hole that she could crawl into and, and, and lay her eggs and raise the babies up. And the people found the, the soffit was from the weight of the nesting material and the babies was starting to sag. And they got up there and they found these little guys. And, and so we're raising them now. Beautiful, beautiful little falcons. Um, all falcons have black eyes and you can see their beautiful black eyes on this little one. And that's one of the ways we tell falcons, because hawks will have, depending on the kind of hawk, blue eyes, brown eyes, gray eyes, yellow eyes, red eyes, but all falcons have black eyes. And we're, they're always, always hungry, even though they just ate an hour ago, they still want more. And so this is actually what we feed them. What this is, is this is chopped up pieces of mice. And they eat, and in the wild, they, they eat a lot of mice, they eat small birds, and they eat a lot of insects. Uh, and so when we do feed these, once they're able to, to feed themselves, we don't hand feed them anymore. And that's about the stage they're at right now. We're just being able to start to feed themselves. And so we'll let them do their thing. And this, this way, that, uh, we try to keep them as wild as possible. Uh, in the, about another week or two weeks, uh, they'll be old enough to be put out in the chamber and they'll have no more human contact until they're ready to be returned to the wild. And so we do like to get them uh, back to the wild as quickly as possible and with as little human contact as we can get away with. Kind of reminds me of a bunch of teenagers at the dinner table. You drop a frisbee on them? No, you're not. I know Cody says, wait a minute, you're not paying attention to me. I'm more important than the baby birds. Huffing and puffing, Cody. Better yeah, that's good. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and get to the box opening. Okay. Is this up? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Cody's the gonna drop something on them. Yeah, I need to move them out of the way so Cody doesn't drop the frisbee on them and hurt them. Okie dokie. Let's get the camera. Okay. I just throw some sticks around and going. I didn't bring them to the rotor to bring them in. No, put them into the robins when they were here. three times a day to feed these guys, little guys. Let's get you away from the door, sweetie. Go on. Oh, are you gonna cuss at me? Cuss, cuss, cuss. Bite me, cuss at me, that's fine, you guys. Go ahead. I can guarantee you, little one, I've been bit by a lot worse than a kestrel. Mm -hmm. 
And right now we have uh, one male and two females. And the way you tell the difference is look at the two that's over here. You can see, I don't know if it shows up bright enough on the, on yep, the camera. Zoom, zoom in a little bit. Okay, what you can see is the one that's on the right has blue shoulders. The colors of its wing are blue right there. And the one that's on the left, the shoulders are the red color. Here, you can get in a little closer. Let me unzoom it and then you can adjust it. Okay, here we go. So you can see my little kestrels here, the one on the right has the, the, the bluer, kind of a blue-gray color on the on its shoulders and wings. This one does not have the blue-gray. So the one on the right is the boy, the one on the left is our little is one of our little girls. Now this is one of very, very few birds of prey, and here's our other little girl, uh, that we can tell whether it's a male or female by its color. Usually with most birds of prey, uh, their colorations are exactly the same between male and female. And so we have, the way we tell if it's a boy or a girl is by its size. The females are generally larger than the males. So that's, that's how you sex birds of prey without actually going in internally and, and checking it out. But uh, it's really quite simple. For the Kestrel Falcon, blue shoulders, male, red shoulders, female. So this is how the Coopers was yesterday and have yeah. been running around the ground. These guys will start going up to perches any time now, huh? And so this little girl is up on a, up on a low perch. And she's going over to her. her. That was her nesting box that I put in for, for them. And, uh, and, and again, as you can see, they're a little bit shy. That's a good thing. Uh, we, uh, once we leave, they'll be going after their food and eating vigorously. Her little ones. Yeah. She would put your food in your box because that's where we usually put it. Your little nesting box, babies. Yeah. Put your nesting box where you where you understand that's your that's your little food source right there. Are they gonna eat it now? Nope. They're they get all they want to eat three times a day. So these guys are not really hungry. Oh, there we go. You're going to get, get yourself a goodie. All right. There's our babies. So we can, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. There you go. It's wonderful to watch them feed. Again, usually I do not watch them feed because I try to give them as little human contact as possible to just to make sure that uh, they stay as wild as we possibly can so when they go back to the wild they don't seek out humans but I thought I'd sit here for just a minute let you guys see these beautiful little falcons having their breakfast Little male's thinking about it. Thinking about going over and checking out his breakfast. There we go. Says, yeah, I'll have breakfast now too. Now we do something in rehab that is not done in falconry and that is called called a feed to waste now what that basically means is at every meal I give them enough food that after each and every meal there's a tiny bit of food left over so they've had all they could possibly want to eat uh, we don't reduce the food they reduce the food naturally and so as they go from little fluff balls that are voracious eaters to this stage where they're pretty much full grown. They just have some more feather growth to do. So this is about as large as they're gonna get. And so we just keep providing food. And if I find that they're only eating half, 
then I'll reduce the food uh, by a quarter. So we always want to have a little bit more food than what these guys will eat to make sure that everybody gets plenty and that there is no competition. We don't want them fighting. We don't want them competing for food. We want to make sure that everybody gets all the food they want. And if we waste a little bit of food, that's okay. Uh, all, all these animals need to be fed to waste, which is give them uh, a, a little bit more than they, than they could possibly want. So there's my little babies. And again, if I'm not in here, they're a little bit more anxious to eat right now. I'm because they're not they're not uh, bonded to me. Uh, I'm I try to stay a stranger, so it's a little bit of a disruption to let these guys for me to be in here for them. And again, you can see very nicely what I was talking about. Um, the male has the blue shoulders. The female has the red shoulders on kestrel falcons. And so, and if you could look kind of closely, it's a little hard to tell, but the females are just a little bit larger than our little male. And so that's, that's typical with all birds of prey, the females. Uh, can be as much as a third larger than, than the males are. Another thing that we can look at here very carefully that's wonderful is look at their faces. Now, falcons have black eyes. Hawks, on the other hand, hawks can have um, gray eyes, blue eyes, yellow eyes, orange eyes, red eyes, brown eyes, but the falcons have black eyes. And so you can see those beautiful little black eyes of our, of our kestrel falcon, the smallest falcon in North America. Falcons all have a stripe that comes down below the eye, and you can see the very clearly on our little peregrine falcons here, the stripes below the eye. Now sometimes the stripes uh, on different species of falcons are so faint that they're very, very hard to see. We call that a tear stain. Other falcons, the stripe that comes down below the eye it is very, very thick, and it actually covers the whole head, and we call that a helmet. Uh, the peregrine falcon is a great example of uh, very heavy, heavy stripes that stripe o over the head that covers the whole head. And the kestrels have a very typical stripe down below the eye. Some of the arctic birds, like the jeer falcon, the stripes are almost invisible, and we call that a tear stain. So that's an, another indication that you're looking at a falcon. Falcons have pointy wings, where the hawks will have the rounded wings. Falcons have generally a little bit smaller tail than a lot of the hawks do, but there are hawks with shorter tails as well. Uh, but the broad rounded wings for the hawk, the narrow pointy wings for the falcons, black eyes, and the stripe below the eye are really good indicators of a falcon. Well, let's go ahead and hop out so they can finish their breakfast. I know I'm disturbing you guys to no end, and, and you don't appreciate that, all the attention that I'm giving you right now. Let you guys have your breakfast. Everybody just wanted to meet you. Running out fast. There's two. Three total. Yeah, total of three. So they'll be actually ready to go once we're done with the uh, the thunderstorms. These guys will be ready to be released. Well, good evening. I'm Martin Tyner with the Southwest Wildlife Foundation, and we're gonna have a little fun this evening. We've got uh, three young Kestrel falcons that are ready to be released back to the wild. These were orphaned that we've that we've had the opportunity to raise. And they're doing well, so let's go grab them up and and let's get them returned. I will stay out here. Okay. Well, like I said, they're ready to go. You hold that close for me, sweetie. Oh yeah, we don't need them all out here. Like I said, they're flying really well. Hi, sweetheart. How you doing? There we go. So cute. 
cute. Oh, cuss, 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 cuss. And Aren't this, they beautiful? This is a male or female? This is a female. And the easiest way to tell with Kestrel falcons, male from female, um, normally in birds of prey we tell by size. Females are about a third larger than the males, but the Kestrels are unique because you can see right here the kind of the reddish brown shoulders. Let's try a different angle. The light, bright light behind yeah. you is making it too dull. There we go. The, the reddish brown shoulders that we have right here, that's a female. Okay. If the shoulders are blue, it's a male. Okay. Well, my sweetie. Do the males have a blue head too? They do have more of a blue cap around the head. And so, nice and fat. And talkative. And talkative. I'll get out of your way and you can... I'm going to get in and grab one other without the end escaping. Cuss, cuss. Yep, this is the second female. We have two females and one male. There, and uh, you can see the reddish shoulders. Yes. That we talk about. And it does have some darker color, but it's not the bluish. And of course, all falcons, the way you can tell if it's a falcon from a hawk, all falcons have black eyes. So she has those pretty little black eyes. And they all have the stripe that comes down below the eye right there. And that's just... Yes, cuss, cuss, cuss. <laughs> She's not happy with you. Nope, that's okay. Okay, ready to go back in for the last one. Look at the little male. Hi, little boy. I need to replace the screen behind the bars there. Okay. Ready for me to open the door or not? Open the door. My little boy right here. Trying to get his talons out of your fingers? Yeah, but that's okay. I get grabbed by a whole lot worse than Kestrels. So that's just fine. Yeah, okay. The color difference is amazing. Now you can see the difference. Look at look at the shoulders here. These are, are blue. We call that blue. And the in the color, the cap around the head, you can see it's far more blue-ish. Yes. than the other ones. It has the little red circle in the middle, but way more yeah. blue than the girls. And again, the black eyes, the stripe below the eye, which is classic falcon. And the tails, are they the exact same on the male and female? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. They're pretty much the same, but they, they the, 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 really the dead giveaway is the blue shoulders versus the red shoulders. Okay. On Kessel. So that's that's the easiest way to tell. Okay, baby. Oh, they are oh, so quick. Actually, the females have striped tails and yeah. the, the male didn't. They do. You. She says, I'm not going to stay in that box. No, you guys are escaping. So the male had a, a big bar on the tail where the females had right. lots of little stripes. Right. So that's another change. Interesting, but you have to see them all close together to see the difference. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let me shut this off and help. Well, here we are out at Rush Lake Ranch, one of my favorite places to release, uh, especially Kestrel Falcons. This is just such an ideal place for them. I, I see Kestrel Falcons. Uh, along the power lines here uh, year-round and over the trees across the rock fence we see them there uh, year-round. Uh, kestrels uh, like to feed on uh, primarily in large insects and then their second choice is small rodents and then they go to small birds and then they their, their final choice is small reptiles. So they eat a variety we have all of those things out here uh, it's far enough away from civilization that we don't have an issue with people uh, and so it's just really an ideal location for them we've got a little bit of a breeze blowing which is is just fine and so we'll get these little guys out and they've been uh, extremely rambunctious to, and ready to be released why don't you go a little, a little bit further down sue let's see if we've got a spot where the bob wire is low. Right over there it's low. Oh no, there's another piece. Yeah. Well, we'll just do it right. Hold them up on top? Yeah, we'll just hold them up on top. 
so you just you just kind of watch and we'll put it right you're gonna here. just open it yep I'm facing me open it and face to, to you so that you guys can see these little kestrels fly away you ready uh -huh. they're not gonna hang around no they are not you ready yep Go. Gates open, one's out. Our female, one of our females. Yeah. So it's a truly ideal spot for them, and these were orphans that that we were able to rescue and get raised up, and back in the wild where these beautiful little animals belong. She's gonna sit down on the fence over there across the street. Yep. And yeah, that's quite normal for them. They've had just a, a huge ton of full food. They've all left with their crop, which is completely full of uh, dinner. So they'll couldn't couldn't have been a better release and nice weather. And the storms are gone. It's not quite as hot as it has been. So we're we're pretty happy that uh, these guys have got a really good chance of survival. And we've got several more coming up, guys.